On occasion, we do get the chance to catch up with old friends. It may be on a roadside or a riverbank, but it was early on a spring morning when I ran into Marvin Schrader. Marvin, where have you been the last 15 or so years? Well, you know, I worked here until 1999, and then uh, something came on me, it was kind of strange. I got an invite to go work on a movie. And of course, that's, I guess, every kid's dream to get in the Hollywood business. And so I jumped at it. I went and worked on a film over in South Carolina that uh, was kind of interesting. It was a film about the American Revolution called The Patriot. I trained troops, uh, actors, how to look like soldiers, act like soldiers. That's an exciting career. Why'd you come back to Fredericksburg? That old hotel right there. The Nimitz? I wonder how many people walk by those doors every day and have no idea what's inside of there. Thousands daily, but it's the story that's inside the building that makes the story what it is. This is a carrier deck of the USS Hornet. This is an actual plane of a B-25 of a model that flew off the Hornet that bombed Tokyo in the start of the war. And piece by piece brought it back in here. But there she is. Chester Nimitz. Although his is far from a household name, a quiet, reserved boy from Fredericksburg, Texas, joined the Navy, rose to the rank of admiral, and became one of the most important figures in modern history. Admiral Nimitz had the largest command of troops than anybody did in the World War at the time. Over two million men of his command, Navy, Marine, Coast Guard, Merchant Marine, Army, and his job was to get to Japan, so he had this large command to do that. You know, when they built this museum, he said, you can build a museum, but don't name it after me. Build a museum and name it for the men and women that served with me in the Pacific Theater. Marvin, if I just woke up and found myself here, I'd think I was on a dock somewhere. <laughs> well, you, you actually are. You've got a uh, boat inside. Inside of the building. It's bad enough to have a B-25 in the building, but we have here is PT-309, patrol torpedo boat, the last surviving combat veteran of World War II. Men fought and died for the country right off this boat. You said the boat was pretty much left yes. like it was. Now there you was, had to clean it up. Sure. Did there you was find four, anything? Oh, yeah. I had talked to one of the veterans, and he told me about the sh plank owners. And the most amazing thing was he told me where it was. I uncovered the plank owner's plaque. What do you mean by plank owners? OK, plank owners was the original crew that served this boat when she was launched. That's the original crew on PT-309. Those guys right there? Right there, every one of them. 1943, when these boys launched this boat, that was the original captain, the XO, and his crew on this boat. Most people put it like on a piece of paper or something. Well, these guys painted it on this wall to let people know that we're the original crew of this boat. And you uncovered that? And I uncovered it. 72 hours later, chipping paint very carefully, because <laughs> there's like 12 coats of paint on this thing. You know, 60 years of fishing boat. And it's got paint, it's got paint. But you, again, this building, this, this part of the structure is original. It was never modified. We knew if we were going to tell the story about the Pacific Theater of Combat, we had to put the Pacific Theater battlefield here. So what we did, we built an actual replica of a beach that we would have fought on in the Pacific Theater. We're on a Pacific island. We're right on a Pacific here. island right here. What we've done here is recreate a small island in the Pacific called Tarawa. It was the first hostile opposed beach our Marines attacked during World War II. And we lost over a thousand men in 72 hours. So this this is no playground, is it, Mark? No, sir. This is history. This is uh, the fighting and dying for your country. This is men and women in a struggle for what they believed in. And this is our biggest education tool right here to talk about that war. You can see it. You can hear it. You can feel it. You know, there's no mistake in when a Sherman tank at, at her 60 tons runs by you. There's no mistake hearing the cacophony of the machine guns or the guys screaming and hollering to go get their job done. And they come boiling out of that LVT to look in their eyes that they're here to do a job. I cannot replicate the feelings, the energy, the ups and downs of combat, and we probably don't want to. But what I can tell you is this, when you see those guys out there running through the, the blank fire and the explosions going off, they're all Hollywood, and to realize 60 years ago plus now, men and women did that for real. Those weren't blanks, there was real bullets flying around, and a lot of those boys didn't come home. 
this is a way to honor those veterans and those people that didn't. Thank you all for coming. And when somebody comes and watches our show, I see pride, I see awe, I see, gosh, my granddad did this. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you all. You bet. Hopefully, if I've done nothing else, I've given some younger generations the fact that they can go up that their uncle, thank their you, grandfather, or go and visit their other family members that are no longer with us and say thank you. The Nimitz Museum I like to think of is a big rescue mission. Tucked away somewhere inside and behind an old hotel lie the archives of that great war in the Pacific, hallowed ground where memories and nightmares share a resting space with the remnants of a terrible fight. It seems if World War II had a tour guide, we think it would have to be Marvin Schrader. Marvin, you feel like you've got it all inside those doors now? Yes, sir, I do. 1941, 1945, Pacific Theater, right there. Thanks for hopping in and traveling with us. Now click the subscribe button for more videos like the one you just saw.